Mark, it's great to have you back, Evercore ISI. On booking, I do wonder whether or not you think the street's making too much of what's being called uh, room night deceleration. Well, Carl, there is room night deceleration. Uh, and Airbnb showed it too. So uh, I don't know why you wouldn't see that from Expedia tonight. There's also a little bit of an extra warning for Expedia in that booking seemed to have Booking holdings seem to have relatively strong North American growth. So not only are you going to have this kind of deceleration across the industry, the travel trade is over, uh, but you're also going to probably have market share pressures on Expedia. So I'm cautious on Expedia going into the print tonight. Then you got to ask yourself, are you a trader if, or are you an investor? If you're an investor, the action question now is, has booking, have booking and companies like Airbnb done enough innovation so that they can grow faster post-COVID and with economic normalization? I think they have. I think they put in enough innovations to do that. That's why I like both of those stocks. So that explains you're trimming your target, but you keep the outperform? Yes, that's right, Carl. Especially with a name like uh, Booking. Look, this is a um, high-quality asset. It trades close to a market multiple, about 19 times uh, gap earnings, bulletproof balance sheet. They buy back stock, 30% margins, um, well-tested uh, business model, you know, very geographically diverse. And I particularly like some of these newer initiatives. They're really better incorporating flights into the offering. And then they've rolled out payments as a segment for the last uh, year and a half. Those are the two things that I think help them come out of all this growing faster than they were than, than they were back in 19. That's why you can have a multiple where it is now or even re-rate a little bit higher. Uh, Mark, where have Uber and I guess to some extent Just Eat Takeaway set the bar for DoorDash tonight? And to what extent is that food delivery and just general delivery growth trend normalizing back to pre-pandemic or, or not? Well, uh, so, so there's a lot that's going on in, the, in uh, DoorDash. The, the biggest risk I think you have is the recession risk. And all of us have to answer, ask that question. You know, are people going to do as much delivery? Uh, are you going to pay, you know, $80 for that, you know, that hamburger delivery that you did, you know, uh, six or nine months ago as the, as the family budgets get tighter? That all said, you know, we are seeing continued sides of market share gains by DoorDash. It's the fastest grower in the delivery business. Uber guided us all to flattish delivery bookings, you know, for the from the June to the September quarter. And what's in the street numbers, if you can work out the Walt acquisition that they recently did, a European delivery company, if you strip that out, what street numbers seem to imply is a sequential decline for for Dash, and so I, I don't feel like there's dramatic risk uh, to Dash estimates. I just don't think we're going to have um, a lot of upside. And I do worry any of these high multiple stocks that miss uh, now, they will get punished severely. So just in terms of the trade, I don't think it's that attractive. Mm -hmm. I like the investment long term on uh, Dash, and, and I think they continue to gain share. So I, I'm willing to stick around, even with short term volatility. Uber also seemed to say that driver supply had improved. It was at a, a at least a recent high, and gas prices have eased off, off a bit. DoorDash was trying to help uh, dashers out with those kinds of costs. Could that be uh, some kind of a margin signal? Uh, yes, it could. I, but I do think that trend is actually starting to turn now. So all of these companies, the delivery companies, had to impose this fuel surcharge uh, about three months ago, they put it in. It was like 50 cents per each order. It did help their couriers. Uh, they needed it. But now with whatever we are, 51 days in, the gas prices is uh, dropping every day. My guess is that the next move there, so let's talk about the next call. The next move there is my guess is that they can take away those uh, fuel uh, surcharges. And then there is a little bit of a hedge in all of these business models. You know, the, the, the upside to the downside, the upside uh, to a, a weakening economy is that more people are going to need that side hustle, that extra earning opportunity and dash is a real a food delivery and, and ride share are really easy ways to get that extra uh, income if you need it so that's a little bit of a hedge in these models